Good evening and welcome to the April 19th, 2016 Hampton, New Hampshire Municipal Budget Committee meeting. Uh, everybody will please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Thank you. Um, first things first, I would like to go around the table, uh, two things to introduce everybody to those at viewing at home, and the other reason to inform our secretary who is operating remotely, who is in attendance at the meeting. Um, we do have two visitors sitting at the visitor table tonight. They are um, candidates for our vacant seat. I would ask that they introduce themselves as well, just for the viewers at home. Um, and I would like to start with you, Ms. Bridal. Ginny Bridal, school board representative. Regina Barnes, board of selectmen. Mike here. Big Kravitz. Brian Lapham. Mike Bluff. Nick Bridal, chair. Uh, Bob Ladd, precinct representative. Timothy Citizen Jones, voters representative. Danielle Augustine. Steve Anderson. Mary Louise Woolsey. Scott Blair. And welcome to our guests. Thank you, everybody. Um, the first item after the introduction of members is to review some of the minutes from uh, the past couple meetings. I have the minutes which I sent out digitally to the members um, from the 216 meeting and the 315 meeting. Um, I would sec suggest that we start with the 216 meeting. I'm still in contact with Eileen about the minutes from the um, deliberative session meeting. She has not gotten back to me yet, but I, it's, communication is in progress to get those <coughs> done and put away. They should be fairly short. Um, but the ones we do have is February 16th and uh, March 15th. So working with the February 16th, does anybody have any issues um, on those minutes? And uh, if not, I would entertain a motion to approve those. I'll move that. Any, any discussion first? Okay, motion to accept by Mr. Pierce. Second, second. Mr. Henderson. Um, all those in favor of accepting the February 16th minutes, um, raise your hand. Any opposed? Any abstentions? I'll abstain. I was not here. Miss yeah. Barnes, Mrs. Bridal will abstain for not being here. Uh, other than that. Oh, and Mr. Jones. Abstentions. Okay. Those are done. We're going to go on to the 315 minutes. I'll move that one for you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Any second? I'll second. I have a point of order. Sure. Oh, and I was, it says March 14th. Yeah. It does. Not the 15th. It... I must have labeled them the wrong minutes. No, they should be the 15th. It was Tuesday the 15th. Okay, so well, I will make a move for that suggestion to get those changed um, for the official record. Um, good notation. Was there anything else from those minutes that um, needed addressing? Yes. Page three. Um, halfway down the page, vote. Six yes, three no. Um, that should be Kravitz, Ladd, and Lapham. L-A-P-H-A-M. Okay. <laughs> well, I think that uh, there were no, no votes. We just simply cast votes for who we favored for the vice chair. We didn't cast votes for who we didn't favor it, for vice chair. So. Well, during the vote. There were three was, votes for you for vice chair and six votes yeah. for Mike Clough. But just my name is but called. No one, yeah. But no one voted that's no. And, but it's saying well, three no, and that's not accurate. Okay, that wasn't my point, but okay. I see your point. I see, I see both points. Um, <laughs> and I will um, have her go back to um, the record and make it more accurate or reflect that. Because I do see, Tim, that is a good point, that um, mm. it was it was a vote for, not a yes or no vote. Right. Um, was there any other... Um, That's true on all the votes, apparently. It was a yes and no, so relative to the vacancies that, that just needs... I will have her address those. Uh, was there any other suggestions for revisions? All right, 
I just will, got this recently, so I haven't really had a chance to read it fully. And given that we're making modifications, why don't we just I would, table I would, the approval for the next? Sure, meeting. I would um, take a recommendation to move these till next meeting. Yeah, so done. Okay. Second. Second. All right, Mr. Jones and Mr. Pluff, moving those to the next meeting for our May meeting. All those in favor? All those opposed? Abstention. Me. One abstention, Mr. Pierce. Okay. Who's got the noisy computer? It's me. <laughs> um. Okay, those are the minutes that I have, and we will get those dealt with. On to old business. Uh, we discussed at the last meeting having a rules of conduct or guidelines and or housekeeping things for um, the running of the meeting. I spoke with our remote secretary, Miss Eaton, and she said the easiest way for us to do a, for her to record our vote is when we do take a vote for everybody to uh, if I take a yay vote, just speak your name into the microphone. That way she can record the yays. Then I'll have the noes go. Those who say no can speak their name into the microphone. And then I will do the abstentions. And if we can keep it relatively in order going around the table, um, that way the documents, the records show how everybody voted. It's easier for her to pick up on it instead of trying to gauge around the room who's got their hands up. Um, it shouldn't take us too, too much longer, and it should give us a definitive record moving forward um, for our secretary. Am I interpreting that to be pretty much what we did last meeting? Yeah, yeah. So it, 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 it was very like similar. That. Hopefully it was a little disheveled last meeting because I was still trying to get it underway, but I think... Uh, I like the way you did it last meeting, just calling the names for yes and then calling the names for yeah, that was Yeah, yeah. I'm actually... That's probably a better way to do yeah, it. I'll yeah. call for yes votes. I'll have you raise your hands, and I will read the names across the yeah. table. And then we'll call for no votes. I will read the names for that. Um, that way she doesn't have a problem here. If that mic's out, she doesn't have a problem hearing the votes on it. Um, does anybody have an issue with the way the, thing, the voting and record keeping is going to be? Okay. Um, guidelines and rules of conduct for the meeting. Um, this was something that I believe Mr. Jones brought up at the last meeting. Um, I think it's a good thing to discuss and kind of get everybody on the same page, you know, being a new board. Um, my goal for this meeting is for us to all, and I think everybody's on the same page, is be civil and encourage good conversation, have a good forum here for discussion, because ultimately we are um, the voice of the voters, and we're trying, I think the goal of us is to give the voters as much information in regards to the budget as possible. That being said, we have a lot of people here with a lot of expertise and a lot of ideas, and um, not always are going to sync up. but we should be able to have a good discussion on it. And um, I don't want things to get out of hand. I don't think we need to have a specific formal set of rules. Um, but I will ask that everybody, um, I can guarantee you that everybody will have the time to speak their point. I ask that if there is redundancy, there's a point of being redundant to make your point, and then there's a point of excessive redundancy. Um, I'd ask that we keep that to a minimum. I mean, uh, we all know what we're trying to get across, and, and um, I will um, try to keep the meetings as concise and as civil as possible. Um, I don't think this is going to be an issue. I think last year we, were very, we did a very good job. I think uh, I'd like to build off of that, um, but I also want to give everybody a chance to speak and be heard uh, on the matters. And let people, when they're speaking, if they have a, a point to bring up, if it's okay to yield the floor to ask a question, let them ask a question and, and have it be an entertain, enter, not entertaining, but interactive discussion um, between members because I think that's how you get most of your um, information out there. Um, I have a feeling if we require to initiate more rules moving forward, I think we can discuss that later on, but I think until we start getting into the meat and potatoes of the budget, we should be able to uh, hopefully have a nice interactive session, and um, move forward. <coughs> um, anybody have anything to add? Yeah, clarification, sure. Please, if I could. Uh, so we're going to continue with speaking when you're recognized <coughs> by the chair, achieving that recognition by having your hand raised. Correct. That you're going to allow uh, 
other people to ask the person who holds the floor, the one speaking, correct, to request that they make or, or ask a question during his speaking. And the speaker can then say yes or no, or give me a minute and let me finish my point, and I will say yes. But but when he does yield to the question, he's yielding to that person. It's not an invite, an invitation to everyone in the room to start pummeling him with questions. Correct. Right. Just one clarification on yeah, that. Yeah, I think that's a good way. I mean, if, if Mr. Jones has a point on a subject and, and he is um, informing the rest of the group on that subject and I have a question, I would raise my hand and Mr. Jones would then acknowledge me. At that point, he would be um, entertaining my question. Um, I think the raising the hand might not work because, especially for me when I'm speaking, I'm not scanning the room for someone looking for attention. Sure. Oftentimes I'm looking at my machine for my notes and so sure. forth. So for them to just say, uh, would you yield for a question is sufficient. I think that's fair. Yeah. Anybody have anything else to add? Mr. Yeah. Kravitz. Uh, the last meeting we talked about a PowerPoint from the RA. I see you got it from the Municipal Association. Did you... I, I haven't heard back from them on it. The communication is still open. Um, we're still trying to get them in here to um, lock something down. I do have something to update you on the NHMA presentation, and hopefully um, upon hearing, getting some, some sort of fruition from the DRA to get them in here for a presentation as well. That is the goal. Um, Mr. Jones. So when you're recognized, as I just was, mm -hmm. by the chair, uh, you have that floor until you yield it. Is that true? Correct. Okay. So long, keeping in mind the early topic of... of Bounds of, of reasonableness. Yeah, reasonableness and redundancy. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, want, I really want to give everybody the chance to speak on, an op, op, on a, any given topic and um, get, their, get their point across. Thank you. I do have one little point. Sure. One thing is we don't need to make comment for something that everyone speaks of. Mm -hmm. If Bob makes a comment and then another person, you know, has to go back over that again. If Mike makes a comment, someone has to go back over that again. Um, if we can keep that flow going without responding to everything that everyone says, I think yeah, I think it'll be I think, a lot quicker. Um, last year, I know there were several times when um, I know in regards to IT stuff, Tim had made a point. I didn't need to sit there and, and repeat everything Tim said because the mm. point had been made. Um, and and so I, I yielded my time. And I, I think that people, um, if we continue to follow that trend, our meetings will stay concise to the point and things won't get lost in translation. And so long as the points get made, though, that's the thing. If you do have something you want to mention that hasn't already been brought up, by all means, we're here to inform and we're here to educate. Um, and if you have a point that needs to be bring it up, uh, brought up, bring it up. Um, there could be a voter at home that's sitting watching that, that has the same question you do or the same point. And we should discuss, this is the forum to discuss those points. And I want to give everybody that opportunity. Um, and I know that taxpayers and, and citizens talk to you guys. And, you know, it's your job to bring them here and bring their concerns here and discuss them. Mr. Pierce. When it comes to rules and regulations, one of the things we had at least a couple of three years in the past was if somebody had come in from the outside as not a member, and if the, vote, the committee voted to allow them to speak, it was perfectly fine. Um, I have no problem with that. I, I, um, I, I didn't... Did we have an instance of that last year that we not, used? Not that I can remember, and I don't think it happened it again before. It was two or three it's, years ago. It's, it's been a while back. When, okay. It was before I, when I was on the budget committee previously. Okay. Yeah, I'd be more uh, than happy to entertain because that. Because every once in a while we might have somebody that we want to talk to, and if the committee is allowed to vote on it, to, to let them vote, I think that's fine as far as I'm concerned, if everybody else is fine with that. I would be okay with that. So I agree, but, but I would qualify that as saying that it's a majority committee decision, is that my understanding? That's yes. what I yes. understood, yeah. Even, even a request for appointment would be the same thing? Uh, a majority decision to have somebody come in? As if someone, if to, I someone think, has to yeah, make I an I think if the majority of the board wants somebody to come in and, and, and talk. No, I'm asking, is that the mechanism by which an appointment could, would be requested? 
that it would then be submitted to the committee to, uh, as a whole to be okay. voted on. Yes, I do see your point. That's that's what I would understand it to be, yeah. Okay, thank you. But you got, also, the thing of it is there's once in a while somebody will want to know if they can make public comment at the budget hearing. Well, there is no such vehicle. But if he, they do come in with something they might want to bring to our attention, and if we vote to allow them to speak, that was the that's the question. Yeah. And I, I, I already agree with you, Mike. Dave. Okay. Yeah, I, I would agree. I'm being Chuck redundant to your benefit. Beforehand. Excessively. And I, and I honestly <laughs> think if there is a member of the public that has a, feels the need to come address the budget committee, I would encourage them to give me um, contact. Where we don't usually have public comments in our meetings scheduled, right. Right. I would be more than happy to entertain the public to come in here and, and um, I would just ask that it be a formalized request through me so that way I can put it on the agenda and, um, and, and make sure we have it all hard ducks in a row. But yeah, I don't recall doing that last year, but I, I do, yeah. It I don't think it's before. been done for a long time. I yeah. can remember mm -hmm. several years ago there was some debate about somebody coming in and wanting to speak and then there was somebody complaining on the budget committee that didn't like it, blah, blah, blah. And I thought it was smart to have input to the budget committee if the majority agreed. And it's a majority decision, obviously. Okay. Uh, was there any other discussion on rules of conduct or guidance or any of the voting record or anything like that? Well, the Mr. simplest Press. way to handle it is just on your agenda, put public comment. If there's nobody here and nobody wants to speak, it's... No, you can't. Uh, uh, that's the way the board of selectmen works. We could do it. Yeah, we're we could do it, but where we don't have... A you lot of public comment. I, yeah. I think just sending me an email. Um, my email is readily available to anybody on the town website. If if they want, if, if somebody wants to come in, I think they, they know how to get a hold of me, and I, I'd be more than happy to uh, make accommodations for that and bring that to the board's attention um, to, to give them adequate time to speak. Um, if there's nothing more on that, um, keeping on old business, we do have a vacancy um, opening. Um, that's the next item of business. I have two candidates um, that uh, contacted me um, as recommended last meeting over the air. Um, two candidates are sat at our, our guest table tonight. Um, one is former, and I want to give both candidates time to speak uh, real quick, and then the, um, the board can discuss, discuss which action we want to take. Um, first candidate is Ms. Wolsey, Mary Louise Wolsey, former selectman in town. And the second candidate is Mr. Scott Blair, who was a member of the Budget Committee last year. Uh, both have expressed their intention to um, join our committee by appointment. And at this time, I will let the ladies go first. And Ms. Wolsey, okay. if you'd like to address the board, feel free. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I believe that I emailed to you, Mr. Chairman, uh, when I sent in my request to be considered a uh, recap, basically, of my public service going back to 1978. So I think uh, if the committee has access to that information, uh, there's not much more to add. I uh, have tremendous respect for the function of the Municipal Budget Committee. I think I can bring a lot to you uh, and be helpful throughout the year. Uh, I have a long record of public service in the town of Hampton, and I thoroughly enjoy what I do, and I really work hard to represent the taxpayers. So if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them, and I really thank you for considering me. Thank you, Ms. Wolsey. Mr. Blair. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, open positions on the Hampton Budget Committee are not usually hotly contested. <laughs> I ran unopposed last year and easily won my one-year seat. After I retired at the end of March, I attended every Budget Committee meeting. Some were more productive than others, uh, but in the end, uh, we presented a budget to the town which was approved, not something that has occurred much in the past. Uh, I feel it, I was a positive force in making this happen. I would like to be a positive force in the process to set next year's budget as well. I have an accounting degree uh, and a great deal of industry experience in budgeting, reporting, and control. Should I not be selected to fill uh, this position, I would gladly support this committee and its leadership uh, in any way possible. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Blair. Um, this is my first go around. Um, <coughs> doing an appointment as far as a contested seat. Um, I would be more than willing to uh, accept a motion to open up the floor for discussion 
if need be. Um, the town clerk was not available tonight to swear in anybody, um, nor was her deputy available. Um, so regardless of how things go, um, we're going to have to push that off to a later date or whoever gets appointed will have to go to the town clerk and get sworn in or any other, as I was informed, any other uh, oath person <laughs> that can deliver oaths to get them sworn in as well. Is there a justice of the peace in the house? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I would entertain that motion to open up the floor for discussion on the vacant seat. I move to open it for second. discussion. Mr. Ladd, seconded by Mr. Kravitz. Does anybody on the board have anything they would like to add at this time? Yeah. Mr. Kravitz. Yeah, uh, it occurs to me. There's no, there's no reason why we don't have any alternates. So yeah, that way you could make room for yeah. both candidates. The law does not uh, be make an such alternate. an accommodation for a uh, budget. It doesn't yeah. even mention that, and the SRRSA is it doesn't even mention that. Hmm? Specific. The RSAs don't even mention an alternate. Right? Yeah, but most committees do, so. Well, yeah, yeah. but. The RSAs for planning full. boards and zoning board of adjustments right. do have alternates in their relative RSAs. Right. This is a specific don't. number. Yeah, this, this is for a uh, specific seat, and um, yeah, as I'm aware, the, the RSA doesn't make room for alternates. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd be more than happy to look into that and get you a more yeah, specific so answer if you like. We have somebody not at the meeting. Um, they wouldn't vote unless somebody's absent. We cannot. We I, can't do it because mm -hmm. in New Hampshire, we don't have home rule, so we can only do what the, what the legislative uh, authority explicitly grants us, mm -hmm. and there is no explicit granting for the creation of alternates. So we, therefore, we cannot do it. it. It might be a good idea, but it's not possible. Well, it's worth pursuing. So. I will, I will follow up with that because um, I, I do agree it would be a good idea so you have a full full board if at possible. Uh, I know other boards do it, um, but I will check into that. Uh, any other discussion? Yeah, I would ask the chair to inquire whether either of the pot potential candidates would be interested in that idea. Would the either of candidates be interested if you can't do it? So legal. You can't, you know. uh, I can ask the question. Yeah. If 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 allowed, by once I find my information, would either of you be interested in an alternate position? It's it's not legal, no. Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. Okay, this that's that that's my understanding yeah, as well. It's not legal. Would you be interested in participating in in, in an illegality? <laughs> <laughs> The presumption is it's not legal, but assuming for the sake of discussion, yeah, just for discussion. that it were legal, would you either of you agree to it, which might simplify the question to on your answer? I, I would not. You would not. Okay. In, Correct. I agree uh, with Scott. Scott, okay. if you were so pregnant, would you have morning sickness? <laughs> 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 Only if you would cause it. <laughs> Any further discussion on uh, the vacancy? The vacancy. I would entertain a motion to take a vote. Let's vote. <laughs> motion by Tim. Second? Second. Mr. Pluff. Uh, what we'll do first, I believe we'll do it like we did the chairman vote and the vice chairman votes for simplification for the secretary. What I will do first is um, ask for those who are voting for Ms. Wolseley to raise their hand. I will take a count audibly, and then I will ask them to put their hands down, and then I'll ask Mr. those who are voting for Mr. Blair to raise their hand. I will take a count audibly, and um, that way we have an accurate record of um, who is going to take this seat. Um, so you have to take a motion first. Not required. But before each vote? Way. You have no one's even mentioned, you know. All right. I move Scott Blair right. and Mary I mean, Louise Wolseley no. for consideration no, of the vacancy. Can that I was get a second? you done. Go ahead, do it again. Second. Now they like repetition. All right, so there you go. There's your motion. Okay. Motion. The motion was made to consider Scott Blair and Mary Louise for the vacant seats. Seconded by Mr. Pierce. Okay. Um, 
I guess you can now do it. Is the way this you want. a? <laughs> and, and this is me being new. I'm asking for clarification. Is this something if there's abstentions that we need a majority vote on? Yes, the yes. law requires that the budget committee, and implicitly that means a majority. Correct. But that's only implicit. The majority committee will fill the vacancy. Okay. So implicitly to me that means the majority. As long as there's a minimum of a quorum. Which we do well, have. Well, there is no meeting without a quorum. Mm -hmm. So we have 11, therefore a majority would be six votes um, in order to um, capture the seat. Correct? Realize we were going to cause him this much trouble. Right. <laughs> That's pretty good. That would that would seem arithmetically correct. Thank you, sir. I was just looking for some validation. All right. Um, getting down to business, I will ask that all those who are voting for Miss Wolseley, please raise your hand. Mr. Henderson, Mr. Jones, Mr. Plough, Mr. Kravitz, Mr. Pierce, and Ginny Bridal. Brian Lapham. And Brian Lapham. How many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And for the record. Those who are voting for Mr. Blair, please raise your hand. Mr. Ladd, Ms. Barnes, myself, and abstentions. Ms. Augustine, um, 731, Ms. Wolseley, congratulations. Thank you, sir. Congratulations, well, thank you for being here. We, we, we ought to team up more often. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Blair, thank you for your interest in the position. I know you will continue to take a, yeah. an interest in this board, and I appreciate all, right. all you Stay tuned, there may be another vacancy anyway. All right. <laughs> Thanks for coming out. I didn't say me. It just said, <laughs> I've been on this board three years, and throughout the course of every year, there's vacancies occurring. That's all. Are you thinking about leaving That's us? True. Again? Uh, Ms. It's Ms. always on one's mind, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Miss Wolseley, as there is no clerk here to swear you in, I do invite you to stay for the remainder of the meeting. Um, I'm going to let you sit at that table if you want, that way for mobility's sake. I kind of have to sit here because I won't have a ride. <laughs> <laughs> well, I encourage you to, to, to stay. Um, I'm not going to make you join us at the head table. You can stay right there. The here. Yes, I sir. Would, I would uh, like this committee to accept Mary Louise as a member, full member of rights, except, of course, for actual voting for any motions we might have. But I want her to be able to speak freely, mm -hmm. as any other member might. I would entertain that motion. I'll second that. Seconded by Mr. Pierce um, to give Miss <laughs> Wolseley active member board status with the exception of voting until she gets sworn in. And I will see the town clerk. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Well, welcome aboard, Miss Wolseley. Thank it's you. Good to have you. Um, you get to take a vote. Sure, take a vote, vote to accept her in. Okay. Well, that's what they now that did. she has won the uh, <laughs> the voting process, I will entertain a motion to have a, a vote. Or do I need no, to? No, no, no. We're voting. You're, you're just kind of vote. Yeah, we're vote. What we're voting for is allowing her to speak oh, okay. and be treated Thank as you. any other member Thank except you, for voting purposes to be for tonight only. In. And I second. I already second. Okay. So that was the motion. Yeah. Here's, here's the second. All, all those in favor of allowing Mrs. Wolseley to have an active membership, raise your hands. Thank you. Um, it's going to be a long year. All those oh. no votes. Miss Bridal. That's because it's, it's not. That, it's going against an RSA. I mean, she's not sworn in yet. She shouldn't be uh, in there, but that's okay. The majority voted too. It's not okay if it's against the RSA. Isn't it? Don't you have to be duly sworn be allowed in? To, to vote, Ginny. Okay, not, but you can be allowed to go to I would, sure. I would say at the pleasure of the committee, I could we can, make comments. We, as, we okay. as a committee But I wouldn't decide. vote. Okay, I'm still, yeah. Good just, point. I just want to be sure that it's not against the RSA. I don't know. So that's I why I... Tell. I may already agreed a while ago we'd let people speak. I, I think I think the manner of businesses that's on the agenda for tonight um, is right. uh, okay um, mm -hmm. for you to speak. Um, yeah. I, I don't think we're discussing any hardcore business right. that, that is going to require any... Right. And I do um, have some thoughts to share with you. No, and, and that's, uh, we will definitely take those. Well, we might have time. to vote again on Was that there one. any abstentions on that last <laughs> yeah, vote just I for... Abstained. Mr. Kravitz abstained. Okay, thank you. And that's just for the record. Um, moving on to the next item, which is the calendar for the year. Um, at the last meeting, we talked about um, the fall calendar, which is our budget season, which is the busy season. I followed up with Christina, the administrative assistant with the town, and looked at the calendar. Um, she advised me that getting dates in for the fall sooner than later is the mm -hmm. best yeah. because that calendar fills up very quickly. Right. What I did was I took the calendar we had last year, mm -hmm. and Eileen had, the chairman last year, had set aside, I want to say, 11 meetings, mm -hmm. supplemental meetings to our town, our regular third Tuesday meetings. So I, using that number, 
Um, I created 11 supplemental meetings that I have not yet digitized and sent out to you like the spreadsheet she had sent us last year. However, I did have the administrative assistant put them into the town's calendar. So they're already selected for us. Um, and they are on the town calendar website. Um, it is my intention to create a little form like she had last year where we can fit in the departments so we can know what we're looking at moving forward. So far, for the record, the supplemental meetings are going to be on October 27th, um, November 1st, November 3rd, November 10th, November 29th. In December, we have the 1st, the 6th, the 8th, and in January, we have the 3rd, the 5th, and the 12th. Um, these are very similar to the meetings that we had last year um, in regards to holidays and the scheduling around the holidays. Um, I honestly think we had probably one too many meetings last year. I think we could have consolidated them. It is my hope if we don't use them all, we don't need to take them. But she said, I'd rather you schedule the room now right. and get it. And if you don't Absolutely. need it, you can always drop it off. So I, I kind of, using that forum, that's what I went after. Um, and if you look at the calendar as a, as a block, I pretty much took what she did last year and blocked out those. I kept most everything on a Tuesday, Thursday. Um, for, for easy sake, because we at least need a break in between days. Don't forget snow days. Like I, I did discuss with her um, some wiggle room on those, but I didn't include them in this package yet. Um, but I will have those solidified once I start putting in the department stuff. Um, and again, I will digitize this probably this week and send that out to everybody um, in regards to those. Looking Mr. back Fritz. on last year, the final review, we had it two nights we probably could have used three so if you have a snow date along in there yeah that we could use for the third night of the final review that would be nice sure sure so when you do the snow date put that in mind if you will please yeah definitely uh we'll use it as a snow day or kind of or, an overflow yeah. overflow day if need be um mr jones <laughs> and wrinkle your fingers too that helps <laughs> that helps get my attention <laughs> I think last year's calendar challenge that we had was, unlike the previous year, which was there was a lot of snow we had to juggle around with, but last year we did not have a snow problem. Right. What we had was uh, a snow of documents. I mean, it, it, stuff was coming into us late, and when we got them, it was like you know, all over the place because it was late and we just kind of slammed together. And, and I'm, I'm hoping uh, that the lack of a, of, a, of a budget problem because we passed the budget Correct. is going to put less of a strain on upstream getting those decisions and documents to us as last year was really tough i think most of the problem we had with the calendar last year was those late decisions there were many of them mm -hmm. and some of them were actually literally you know like minutes before we met and had to make decisions on them in fact there was even changes made at the public hearing coming uh, from upstream, you made a call. Uh, so I think a lot of the challenges that you're talking about, Mike, from last year was not so much a calendar-based issue as it was, you know, getting these decisions down kind of sort of late up from upstream. And I'm sure they had reasons for that upstream, and hopefully that won't occur uh, this year. Uh, the main thing is that last year, relative to the calendar, was that we put off our final budget review uh, into January, mm -hmm. and we did that because that's when the maximum information is available to us. Mm -hmm. Prior years, we were making these decisions as early as Thanksgiving, and you still had well into a month to go, and a lot of the information simply wasn't available in terms of making a, an informed decision. So I like the idea of, of uh, doing the final review in early January, because I like to make decisions when I have maximum amount of information available. But that does cause a bit of a, uh, uh, a tightening in the calendar in that January. There's, there's no denying that. But I think that's just, uh, it's just too bad unless we want to, you know, be making decisions with less information than perhaps we ought to have, which is the alternative. Oh, and I don't, I don't think that's good. I think, that, I think that's not good at all. I'd rather suffer the calendar in that uh, week or two and be making decisions uh, more or less blind. Well, maybe we ought to try to have a couple of snow days in January then, based on that alone. That would be fine, yeah. The one thing in January we have to worry about is we do have dates um, that we have to at least take into consideration mm -hmm. 
um, that things have to be in by or a certain date. By. And I will I will double check the calendar with Christina because that was what I was finding is those dates are falling earlier this year than they did oh, last right. year. Yeah. Um, so we might have to. I know last year we didn't meet between Christmas and, and New Year's, and I was trying to keep the same this year um, to give people that break because um, I know that that's the throes of budget season. Um, I, I will relook at the calendar and, and, and try to adjust something. I do agree with Tim. Um, yeah, having the most information and suffering for those two weeks I think was beneficial, um, and that's just my opinion. Um, but not voting on things early. I, I like the way, and I'll be more than happy to discuss how we're going to deal with that later. But um, I do think that those last couple of weeks, we made a lot of good decisions and a lot of uh, good progress with the most information that we had available to us at the time. Um, so I will definitely look at the calendar and see if I can't squeeze another one or two in there. Um, it's going to mean, you know, everybody knows they saw the calendar last year. It's going to mean that January is going to be a tough week, but it's it's... A tough month, <laughs> but uh, week. it's it's budget season, and and that's that's what is is required, yeah. um, in order to make good sound decisions and informate informative decisions. Um, I saw him, Mr. Kravitz. Yeah, if I recall last year, I, the biggest problem we had was the water selectmen wanted us to submit questions to them. They didn't want us to talk to department heads and mm. wanted us to strictly work off them. Of the series of questions that we submitted. When you've got new people on the committee, they have to learn about the departments. Yeah. You know, I mean, that created a lot of the problems for us last year. Yeah, and I, I, I do recall being a new member last year, um, yeah, flying blind a little bit when these department heads came in. Uh, and I did, I did appreciate um, the thoroughness of some of the other members that was on this board. Some of the people had a lot more experience. Um, you could tell that they had had the, the eyes for the, the scrutiny of the budgets, and that opened up my eyes a lot as a new person. Um, I think having the questions in your mind ahead of time is a good thing. Write them down. Hmm. Get the questions out to the group. Let's get talking about it. Um, these are, you know, uh, these are questions that we're going to be asking these department heads that we're going to have an need answers to. If you know a question ahead of time, if we can get that to the department head ahead of time, mm. they can head that question off at the pass and give us the answer we're looking for. Yeah, because one of the things we that was a problem last year was the subcommittees. Yeah. You know, we wanted subcommittees, and the board of selectmen said, you know. Well, we'll we will be addressing the subcommittee issue in a, in a new business. I, I just um, wanted to put but it on the table. I, I, I like the idea. I mean, some of these questions that were presented have come up year after year after year, and they haven't changed. And if we can, uh, I think actually the department heads that did a decent job of kind of staving those off at the beginning. But if we can get those to the department heads ahead of time, so that way they know they have an answer for us walking in, I think that that's advantageous for us to do so. Um, understandably, we're going to have questions as they present materials, which I totally, uh, you know, see as a reality happening, which we'll have, you know, the opportunity to ask those. But I think the more questions we can get to them beforehand, funnel them through me, I'll get them to the department heads. Um, through the the protocol set up, um, I'm assuming that the protocol is going to stay the same from the as last year. Um, oh, I hope not. <laughs> no, I, the IT subcommittee used that protocol last year, and and it worked with hiccups. I think it can be more efficient. I think it can be more streamlined. I think it will be efficient if we try to stick to that. <laughs> I think if we try to stick to that. Um, I think we'll be okay. Well, the only problem I have with that, Mr. Chairman, is in the RSA it does not say that you have to have protocol by the Board of Selectmen. That's not stated any place. Mm -hmm. In other agree. words, by statute, it's not supported. Yeah. So by, by the statute, then that's illegal if you use that logic. I don't think that is... I think it's more of a courtesy that they're asking instead of them making a demand and I would request that come time to address that stuff I will work on behalf of this board to address that to make that process as seamless as possible good job and as streamlined and efficient as possible good job because it is in everybody's best interest for us to have a good flow of communication between us and the administrative part of the town okay. Mr. Jones 
think it's important to stay in context. We're not talking about subcommittees right now. And Bob is referencing subcommittee protocols. There were no special protocols imposed Correct. on the budget committee as a whole. So let's not conflate the two. The budget committee as a whole did not have uh, the selectmen saying this is the protocol for the budget committee as a whole, other than other than the selectmen's rep saying uh, requests have to go through uh, uh, him from the chair and, to, and then to, from him to the selectmen's chair. I mean, other than that, it didn't affect the whole committee. It affected the chair Correct. and the rep. I imagine that we have a different rep, uh, and uh, she has not taken anything close to the um, exhaustive protocol that was announced prior, so we don't have to worry about fitting through that particular knot hole. Uh, in any case, when we needed information, we took, uh, as a committee, not as a subcommittee, but as a committee, we, we invoked the RSAs and voted as a committee requesting specific information, and th that's the protocol we used as well, and we got the information because the law requires there, there to be the response. So you're right, we're not required to respond to a particular protocol, except which isn't defined in law. But at the same time, we want to we want to foster, you know, uh, a cooperative uh, relationship that has a maximum communication channel. All right, so we have to be sensitive to both. I, I'm not willing to yield that we have to be slave to some external body imposing a protocol on us. Right. But at the same time, I don't want to turn a deaf ear to their thoughts on protocol. Correct. All right. Good. I, I want things to be seamless, and I want things to be efficient for us, and I think we can achieve that. Um, and I think that that's uh, you know, beneficial for all parties involved. Mr. Kravitz. Yeah, oh, it occurred to me, there's a bridle over here, there's a bridle over the board of selectmen, there's another bridle there, and how, many, how many more bridles are there? I'm a, I'm <laughs> 656. Yeah, I was I'm, sure, I'm sure you're not the only one that that has occurred to. Let's, let's not get into personalities, all right? But trying to keep, <laughs> yeah, trying to keep the yeah. personalities out of it, um, I have already talked to Ms. Barnes at length about utilizing her as our selectman's rep to, to keep the lines of communications open. She, she has said that her intentions to me is to have a great line of communication this year, and I actually look forward to working with them, and I think we'll be okay. I'm I really sure do. We'll I don't anticipate any problems, and if we do, we'll, we'll address them as they come up. But I, I definitely think it's not something that, um, in regards to the calendar, um, <laughs> is, is needing our, uh, any further discussion, unless there is any further discussion on the calendar. All right. The one, the one last thing under old business was something that was brought to my attention. It is not on the agenda tonight, but I wanted to address it as it is from last year. Um, Mr. Jones had mentioned to me that the um, budget committee from last year, had, December 23rd, December 23rd, had requested the updated information from the finance department um, for the 2015 actuals at the end of last year. So that way the spreadsheet that was given to us, we can have an updated version with 2015 actuals. So more as well or less... As, as well as the budget changes that had been made to date. Correct. The, the, the But we never got that, and so now I'm simply <laughs> seeking the budget committee to bless the idea of let's get the spreadsheet as it was finalized for 2015 so we have it for reference going forward in 2016. And... and um, I think a digital copy of that is yes, probably exactly. sufficient. Digital in Excel rather than in, PDF. In Excel, the Excel, the Excel spreadsheet. Just as last year the Budget Committee voted to request the Excel spreadsheet mm -hmm. uh, and we, we received it, uh, we should do likewise. Mm -hmm. I guess now I move that we request uh, to receive the finalized 2015 spreadsheet, including the year-end actuals and, and the... Mm -hmm. The, and the opinion. final budget yeah. numbers. So I, I make that motion. I would. I'll, I'll second that. Okay. So the motion um, to request the updated, finalized budget, and then the actuals from 2015. Um, I will make that request of Miss Barnes. Um, I will put that in email form to you tomorrow um, to have that sent to uh, back to me so I can disseminate it to the board. That does um, require a vote. Mr. The digital form. I'm just trying to. Clarify the, the motion. I was motioned by Mr. Jones, seconded by Mr. Pierce. Um, I would now entertain a vote. All yes votes for that. Uh -huh. Please raise your hands. 
All right, going around the room, Miss Bridal, Miss Barnes, Mr. Pierce, Mr. Kravitz, Mr. Cliff, myself, Mr. Ladd, Mr. Jones, Miss Augustine, and Mr. Henderson. All no votes. No on any abstentions? I'll abstain. Uh, we did get one at the beginning of February. I know I have it. I've got a I don't, couple. Yeah. I, I don't know. Maybe the only one. <laughs> maybe I'm the lucky one. Yeah. If they already have it, then there'll be no problem sending it to the rest You're of us. Right. Right? <laughs> oh, if I know one, I would have sent that back to everyone. Well, what we'll do is we'll get that request uh, from Miss Barnes. I'll send you an email tomorrow morning. Um, and, and we'll see if we can't get that before the next meeting. I've got one comment. Yes, Mr. Kravitz. Yeah. If I recall correctly, Scott, the strength that Scott Bollea brought to the committee was he did the spreadsheet of the old years so we could compare. What Correct. I believe he took the actuals from... Um, yeah, right. He, I want to say he went all the way back to 2010 or 2011. Yeah, in right. a few instances, yeah. Yeah, and, and mean, inputted those. We things. don't, you know, but I mean, that... And those, those figures should still apply. I mean, I know I still have the old yeah. budget on my right. computer. Right. The historic uh, facts. So yeah, no I think all we need is the updated, the finalized budget. Yeah. And, and it's got and the, the new columns in, yeah. And the, yeah. Um, I think I've got the final one. And he could, yeah, because he had them all annualized, too, right. from yeah. the monthly reports as well. For three or four years, I did them, and I had sent them out to everyone. Yeah. Yeah, so a lot of work. <laughs> we'll get that request sent off, and um, that, I believe, takes care of old business, unless anybody has any other old business that I'm forgetting. Oh, I, I don't want to I can't see the agenda, Mr. Chairman. It's do okay. you have new business? We do have new business. Okay, then I'll, I'll do this okay. after. I like, the, I like the fingers. That gets my attention. <laughs> <laughs> um, new business, the first item up for business is the NHMA presentation. After um, discussion last um, month, about getting the NHMA to come down and do their budget, our municipal budget committee um, presentation. Uh, we decided to move forward with that um, through Ms. Barnes and town manager. We got that scheduled. It is going to be scheduled for the May 17th meeting. Um, I'm basing my fact off of last year. They took about two hours and 15 minutes from what I recall. Um, they said their presentation is about the same. Um, so I'm planning on that for next meeting. I would like to not try to keep the other business for the meeting uh, so we're not here all night. And, and um, if we can push everything out until June, I'd love to have that be the focus of the meeting. Obviously, if there's something that requires our attention, I have no problem putting it on the agenda. But I'd like for everybody to just come in, enjoy that presentation. And, um, and in the request sent to the town manager it was requested of us if we had any questions just like for the department heads if we have any questions ahead of time that we already know for an HMA if you could please get them to me ahead of time and I can send them off to them that way they can bring an answer um, I know one of the problems with last time was um, the question and answers we got a ton of information thrown at us yeah. and it was it didn't leave a lot of room for question and answers at the end um, and I know that there were questions that probably didn't get answered. So if you have some from prior years or if you've done your own research and you have those questions already formed, please send them to me. I will get them off. And then that way they can address them uh, in their presentation. Mr. Jones. Last year, questions were simply not allowed, period. It wasn't a question of time. It was simply not allowed. No. Oh, okay. Um, weren't they in written form last year? No, we're not allowed in any condition. <coughs> And um, last year also, they did really two pieces. They did one on the budget process, and then they did uh, basically what they call a legislative update or something mm -hmm. to that effect. Yeah. Um, I was there. Yeah, I think probably half of the time was spent on the legislative update, or certainly a good portion at least. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that we need, as a budget committee, to have the legislative update. We should be focusing on the budget process itself, not on on what they're doing to try to influence the legislature to do something for a subsequent year. We're dealing in the here and now for the budget with what it is. And so I would encourage you uh, to just tell them to can the legislative update. That will give more time uh, for the uh, budget process itself. Okay? I don't know if you want a motion on that or not. I don't think it's necessary. Uh, I think probably consensus we don't really need a legislative update on that um, the other point I wanted to make 
was the questions. Now, mm -hmm. we're going to be allowed to have questions interactively, and there's also, just like we do with the department heads, like you said. Correct. So we can have interactive questions as things are going along, or at the end, whichever they prefer. I don't really care which. Or, or and or if they have, it's kind of like the department heads. If your question is going to engender them to do some research, it only makes sense to send the questions ahead of time. But if it's not, you know, all those questions that they would need necessarily research, then it's probably something you could deal with after they do their presentation because they very well may be answering your question when they do the presentation. Correct. So I have that correct, that process? Yeah. Um, I'm referring to the email. Just That's why I was trying to... Um, yeah, I'm just trying to interpret it so that we all have the same interpretation. Yeah, well, I want to make sure we're all prepared for it as it is next month. Yeah. Um, What, what what the email said directly was, uh, if the committee or individual members have specific questions or areas of the law or process that would they, they should be prepared to address, please send them so that way they can make sure that they are addressed in the presentation. But the question is, does that statement preclude questions in the meeting? I will follow up with you. I will follow up with you. Um, I do see the benefit to having a question and answer after the meeting. Mm. That being said, their presentation is usually about two hours long. I understand the, the legislative update part. I just don't want to make sure we're here all night. I don't want to be here all night. Because I don't think any of us want to be here all night. But I do want to make sure everybody has the chance to talk. Um, <laughs> I was going to just the fingers, Brian. Right. <laughs> Mr. Pierce first, you, then Mr. You mentioned something about June. Right? We have have we decided we're going to have meetings in Ju Ju June and July and August? I think I think June June should June be yeah. is a definite. Yes. But yeah. I think at June we can discuss yeah. the rest of the summer. Right. I mean, historically we've taken the three summer months off. No. Most, I no, agree, no, but two. last year no, we did no, not. No, no, two. no. Two. only July mm -hmm. and August. Uh, don't interrupt, please, unless you have the chairman's last, permission <laughs> to speak. Thank last you. last year we did not take any months off. Um, right. And I, as of right now. I don't want to make that decision. I think, um, you know, we have the presentation in May. I think go ahead and plan on coming here in June, and if we discuss at the June meeting that we don't need to be here in July and August, and that's something we discuss at that point. But I don't want uh, to be making any decisions on that topic right I now. I just don't want us to come in and spend a lot of time on nothing in I the agree. middle of the summer. Yeah, okay. short, short and sweet. I'm going to go to Brian first and Mr. Jones. Um, only to Tim's comment, if they want to bring us literature, you know, something for us to look over as far as the legislation mm -hmm. goes. I would, you know, more than welcome that. But I, there's the, you know, we don't really need to discuss it, but I don't want to ignore if they have something that we can look over. Yeah, I believe Good last point. year they brought... They they brought yes, they did. That's right. And that's why I don't want to cut that out. And earlier in the <laughs> email, they did say yeah. they're bringing out handouts yes. uh, yeah. that were informative Great. to the tune of last year as well. Yeah. So that will be coming. But we don't need to really go over it. <laughs> But it would be good if we had it. I'm going to go to Mr. Jones next and then back to you, Mr. Pierce. I agree with Brian. I, I should have included that. It, 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 all the information in handouts that they think is appropriate, including <coughs> legislative updates, would be welcome. Just don't think we need to do a presentation on it like right. we did last year. That's all. I'll make sure that that tune is reflected in the correspondence that I sent them. Yeah, regarding the comments uh, that Mr. Pierce made about subsequent meetings, I was not aware that. We, in, in your answer, which was we didn't skip any months, we did. We skipped August. We did last year? Yeah, yeah. we did mm -hmm. not do yeah. August. Yeah. We did July. Okay. And July was important because we were anticipating a res having to deal with a response from the Department of Revenue Administration Correct. Remember that. concerning a very important decision we made in the month of June. And so those were very valuable meetings. Okay. Back to the and, point. And so I think having meetings when they're valuable last year would prove the point. I don't know why we're meeting in June this year yet. You said it's anticipated. What did you have in mind for June? <laughs> uh, Something. I, I don't see the need to cancel the meeting yet. Yeah. Oh, I agree. I agree. I agree. So, um, if there's anything, no reason to say, you know, we we'll definitely have one either, right? No, I think if we have one, as long, unless something comes up and presents itself, I think that's why we need to keep it on the calendar. Oh, plan it on sounds, it, but it sounds to me like it's going to be a short meeting. Yeah, plan on uh, it, but it's not definite kind of thing. Yes, yeah, yes. Okay. If anything changes, I'll... Feel better, uh, Mr. No. Pierce? 
Back, We're going to go back, to Mr. Pierce and then Miss Wilson. Back to where we were a few minutes ago before you changed the subject like you always do. Uh, Brian, you can get the legislative updates emailed to your PC every time one comes out. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, well, that, and there's more, there's like enough, say, updates, there's enough updates, filler updates, there for updates. anybody to be saturated with. You're right. But if Thank they you. have stuff they want to give to us, I'll yeah. take it. Okay. It's printed. So. What? Ms. Walsley? What they'll present to you is the same thing they presented last year, a folder yeah. with information. But you can, following up on what Mike said, you can go on the NHMA website. I have a copy of the final legislative results for 2015. And some of the stuff in there is really important. And it won't hurt to familiarize yourself with that because some of the legislation that passed has made changes. It's about 10 or 15 pages. And I have a printout at home. I didn't think to bring it tonight, but that can be very valuable. And you'll want to look at that before. It says final legislative bullet in 2015. If you can send that to me, I'd be more than happy to send a digital copy to everybody okay. um, for review before the presentation. Because you should know what like that legislature is doing. This is the final stuff, not the inexpedient to legislate or whatever. This is the real stuff that's locked in stone now up in Concord. And I did send... Um, digitally a book that I was given, um, which is from the NHMA, the basic law of budgeting. Yeah, that's um, good too. What I figured is it, if it was given to me for review, mm -hmm. I think you guys should have it too. Um, it that's pretty much what they'll bring. Yeah, and, and I was told if you want a copy of this that I can yeah. make them for you and give you a hard copy too if you like. I figure right now I'd save the trees and just send it to you <laughs> digitally. Um, Mr. Jones, and then I'm going to ask if anybody that hasn't spoken, speak up so we can move on to the next It's my okay. expectation that what was passed in 2015 mm -hmm. uh, should be incorporated in their bu budget process presentation. Well, you'll I'm get talking about legislative update. Is yes. I'm talking about legislation that's mm -hmm. in the pipeline but not yet in law. Right, but what's right, already so passed, I, I want to be, mm -hmm. Tim, is what, really, what's a done deal really will help you. What I'm talking about when I say legislative update in the past, most recent past, and going forward, when I say legislative update, I mean what's in the pipeline mm -hmm. of the legislature, not what has come out of the legislature. You can want what has come out of the legislature, legislature ought to be in the budget process presentation they make to us, that already be incorporated in their presentation. <coughs> Why? Because it's part of the budget process that they're <coughs> asking, no, no. that we're asking them to present to us. No, you can. We don't want them to say, here is the budget the way it was in 2010, no, the budget no, no, process. No. And by the way, here's a bunch of changes that we made in 2011, 2012, no. 2013, 20. No, that's not that. what I want. I want it all cohesive as possible. I, I, I think, uh, just to try to wrap my head around this, I will open, reopen the correspondence with the NHMA and <laughs> find out. Um, obviously, Items regarding to the budget process that are not currently law, that it could be open items on the floor right mm. now, don't directly affect us right now right. as far as the presentation not goes. Right. Right. I think what, what this board can benefit most from, especially those new members that are here, is the budget process yes. as, it is, as right. it is right now, mm -hmm. up until right now. And I think that that would be most beneficial to this board. And I think that's the point that Tim was trying to make. And I think kind of we're all on the same page with that. Mm -hmm. um, and I will make sure that that point is um, across when I send an email back to the NHMA tomorrow mm -hmm. um, and let them know that, that we're focused on the budget process. Um, things that are happening right now that are open and could change, eh, we'll follow up on that at our leisure. Great. Just as a final thought. HMA does have a website. It's a valuable website. Right. And on that website, you'll find uh, webinar topics that you can register for as a, as a member of the government, which we all are. So you can sign up. It doesn't cost you anything. They're covered in our dues that we pay. And I've, I've gone to several of those webinars, um, and, and they've, uh, to varying degrees, all been useful. And some, I do believe exceptionally so. I do believe that last year they have specific seminars throughout the year too that you mm -hmm. can attend if you feel oh, yeah, so every, inclined. Every month they have specific seminars yeah. on various topics. And then they, I'm pretty sure they brought a calendar of that last year. Yes. Um, yeah, so that the way, same thing that's on their website. You yeah. can go right there and you can register on the website. Yeah. So they used know. to be free, but they're not anymore. No, no, the webinars are free. Yeah. 
Oh, the webinar. Yeah. 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 Which is me. It's much better than having to travel somewhere to listen. Mr. Kravitz to first, and then you, Mr. Ladd. Mr. Kravitz. Yeah, one thing I wanted to point out is if anybody has a question, you can call them. They'll talk to their lawyers will talk to you and give you a decision. Yeah, I've had that. Actually, at one point, I went out to Concord, had a meeting with them, and, you know, they'll accommodate any question as long as you're a member of the budget committee or anybody in public office. Mr. Ladd. I would just move to close discussion on this issue for Second. the moment. I will, I will yeah. accept that motion. I, I think um, yeah. discussion. Yeah. Yeah. How many moments, moments did you have in mind? <laughs> What's next on None from you. <laughs> um, the next, the next topic can get heated, and I don't want it to. It is one that was not on the agenda, but I think it deserves at least a little bit of discussion. I'm going to ask that we keep discussion to to task. Um, it's something that I should have put on the agenda. It's the topic of subcommittees. Um, I think it's a little premature to get into subcommittee talks in April of the year, but it is something that I want everybody to think about moving forward. Um, I know last year we went through an exhaustive process and came up with subcommittees for pretty much every aspect of the town. Um, only one or two ever had a charge, and, and that was the DPW and the, the IT subcommittee, which I was a member of. Um, I, saw, I see the benefit to having specialized members who have experience or um, an interest in a topic. However, I, I don't want to muddy the waters too much and dilute our committee so much that we're, we're missing the point. Mm -hmm. um, there are some big projects that are coming up this year that I think we should have some people who are more focused on researching those projects. Um, last year, it turned out the Warren articles took up a lot more of our attention than the actual operating budget. And I think that that's going to be a pattern that the town continues to see. Um, and you know what? Those Warren articles deserve as much of attention as the operating budget does, as well, in my opinion. Um, trying to anticipate how to handle this situation this year. One of the um, projects that I worked on last year with the IT subcommittee was the implementation of 365. Um, this has been an issue for the town that the town has talked about for a couple of years. Um, I think there's a lot of people in this town and the consensus of the town that it's something that the town should look very hard at doing. I think a lot of people have seen the benefits of it. But they just, I think the focus of last year was that they wanted a good plan for it. Um, I think it would be advantageous of this board to have people who are dedicated to looking at that project um, and, and being an expert at it. That is one example. Um, DPW is a big part of our budget in this town. I think it's advantageous for us, maybe not to have a whole subcommittee talk about every single aspect of DPW, but they had some big Warren articles last year that if we had a representative or a liaison or whatever you want to call it, somebody who's who can can go and, and, and get a handle on this and, and kind of know their stuff about it. I want it to be fluid. I want it to be cohesive. I want it to work together. I know that doesn't always happen, but I think it can, and I think it's something that we should strive for. Um, I don't know if specific subcommittees are the way to do it. Um, I think a lot of times that role can be accomplished with maybe one person, um, just having a line of communication. Um, that being said, I think, in my opinion, and we can discuss this, that having project or departmental um, experts would be a better route to go than a whole subcommittee that, that is... Being on a subcommittee is a lot of extra time. I can tell you that from last year. I know Mike and Tim can tell you that. We met a lot. We accomplished, I think, a lot of good work last year. I think Mike can agree, and I think Tim can agree, that we did, we did some good research, and we, we learned a lot. Um, but I want to make sure our efforts are focused on this year's operating budget, this year's uh, articles. I want to make sure we're doing as much as we can to get the information out to the voters, so that way when they go into the booth, they have as much information as possible. Um, Mr. Jones. We want the speed, so I'm going to go for speed now. Okay? <laughs> <clears throat> I think the IT subcommittee uh, did do some important work. We have some uh, uh, 
remaining work to complete in, in order to uh, bring it to an end, which would be my hope this year, is bringing it to an end by having a, a, a valid completion of, of the open items that we have. Now, I won't go into them, but I will if you wish. The, the uh, subcommittee members last year are present again this year. It would be great if they reconstituted and continued and finished up that work. Also, I think that uh, DPW, our, our Mr. Pluff, is uh, has been uh, you know interfacing with DPW for many many years, and we are well served when we have an expert come in, offload us from having to put too much emphasis or energy into a particular area that we know little about, and so Mike relieves us of that burden, and so I would like to see uh, Mike be a master or a liaison or. Or ninja, whatever you want to call them, I don't care either. I said Jedi. But, not, <laughs> but you know, while the IT subcommittee needs to be a subcommittee, I guess, project committee, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. it needs to be some kind of committee because it's a multiple member thing. But in the case of DPW, really all we have is Mike, uh, and I don't think we need to be burdening it with all kinds of committee stuff. Yeah. We just make him the DPW master for the budget committee. And uh, likewise, if, if Mr. Henderson is interested or willing, I would suggest his vast experience in the police department might make him well suited to be the police master for the budget committee as well. Now, if anyone else has any expertise, I would, su I would suggest entertaining their being masters of a particular topic. But that's the way it would be. So I so move that we create or continue the IT subcommittee, make Mike Pluff the master for DBW, and with your approval, Steve, Make Steve the master of the police department for the budget committee. Um, I'll second it with the, oh, so we can discuss. You wanted it. speed, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, and I appreciate that. <laughs> um, I would second the motion for discussion. I second it. That's for okay. Discussion. Oh, second. I already okay. Did. Yeah, yeah. That's, Sorry, yeah. Um, my first thought would be um, if that's something that Mr. Pliff and Mr. Henderson are, 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 are um, comfortable with, being a liaison or a master or. Um, highlighting the expertise that you have that is well documented within the town. Um, I would definitely encourage uh, us being able to rely on you for your expertise in, in those matters. And um, I would be happy to entertain any further discussion from anybody else. I just don't like the word master. I like point person or something. A liaison. I like yeah. liaison. I like yeah. 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 master. That's good. Yeah, and, and it's more just a representative right. of, even when, representative, you know, right. we all know Mr. Henderson's experience with on the police department. He's he's kind of our go-to guy, right. our representative for the police department. I know if I have questions about the inner workings of the police department, I'm going to go to him. I think the title is is irrelevant. Irrelevant. Yeah. yeah. Um, understand that there might need to be a title, though. Well, there has to, it has to be a title. Yes. But the bottom line, the only reason I chose master is because when courts recognize an expert, they refer we to them as a master. You, so it's a legal term, DPW. that's all. It's not the all the connotations that you may DPW. think of in terms of master or slave kind of stuff. Like it doesn't do with that. <laughs> but if you want representative, fine. If you want Ninja Turtle, I'm okay yeah. with that too. I, I don't think really representative care. is a fine uh, representative is fine. For fine. Yeah. fine. So I modify my motion to be representative. Sure. I assume you will support in your second the modification. I'll think about it. All right. Mr. Mm -hmm. Ladd. <laughs> My observation last year was not a question of the competency of the, any member of this board in an area that's just been discussed. It was how to make it work effectively with the board of selectmen right. so they yeah. don't feel challenged by it or irritated by it or assuming this board's taking their job mm -hmm. away from mm -hmm. them. Yeah. So I would say mm -hmm. before any of this stuff happened, someone should sit down with the Board of Selectmen and our representative to it and work out a compact so this will flow. Um, if I may, Mr. Chairman, sure. may I make a comment before we even start discussing this at more, at more at length? Statute is very clear, Mr. Ladd. It says we are, by law, able to talk and discuss budget with the town employees and so on and so forth. <clears throat> right. So, I mean, it's, it's not like we have to run everything by Mother May I before I even scratch myself. It's already allowed by statute. Mm -hmm. So what we, what I think you might be suggesting, if I'm interpreting it right, you might want to make sure we develop a very cordial relationship rather than having dictate to us the terms of the conditions. Yeah. 
That comment is already starting to create some tension. No, me, I'm saying it's it should be a cordial relationship rather than trying to make it like it's us and them. Allow me. May, may, I, may I ask a question, Mr. Pierce? Mm -hmm. Would you would you allow the selectman's rep to make a comment on this before we proceed further with this discussion? Sure. Thank you, Ms. Barnes. I just want to say, stem on both of what you said. I think that it's a great idea that the selectmen understand what's going on whether or not it's legal or not illegal. Like you're saying, mm -hmm. cordial. It's cordial. Mm -hmm. Let's all work together. Communication, key, like I said, my MBA, that's all I'm reading about right now. Communication, communication, it's got to happen. Mm -hmm. So I think that whatever we agree on as a committee, as a board, as a selectman rep, I will get that over to the selectmen mm -hmm. and relay them the message, the intentions, you know, they want to, Mr. Henderson, Mr. Pluff, the IT, I don't know who the members yeah. of the IT committee, but what the intentions are. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't see how it's going to hurt. Yeah, it's it's, it's going to make things better. My, after dealing with last year's committee, I, I, I think we, we did discuss last year um, that this board does have the right to nominate a representative to, be, to talk to a town department head. Mm -hmm. okay. I think... Um, we have the right to create subcommittees by the statute. I think what Mr. Ladd was trying to get at was addressing the, I think last year there was a communication breakdown. Mm -hmm. The pipeline, the, the, the line of information going back and forth between the Board of Selectmen was the hang up. I think um, they will have, I think the Board of Selectmen should have no problem with us creating a position as we're legally allowed to do. Um, I think the Board of Selectmen just want us to have uh, a little more um, timing and, 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 you know, working with the department heads, they're very busy and we ask a lot of our department heads. I think, you know, just keeping them in mind, keeping cordial, keeping everything above board, keeping everybody on the same page. I, I don't anticipate a problem with that. Ms. Barnes has already been very um, um, good to us in, in, in helping facilitate the flow of information. I don't foresee any problems like that, like we had last year happening again this year um, and I, I think that'll be okay I think it, I think it is a the communication thing which I think we should be able to nip in the bud this year and I do agree that that you know Tim brought up a good point if we address this issue now mm -hmm. maybe not this meeting vote on it or if it, it, it could probably wait until June to actually come down and name the representatives but at least we're talking about how we're gonna handle things in the future because we know that at some point we're gonna want somebody from our committee to sit down with the department head and talk about the trucks or talk about the salt shed, and, and we want to have that representative already established. That way we can say, you know, Board of Slackman, when is it good for our department representative to talk to the department head? And give them as much notice as possible, that way it's easily facilitatable, and um, we can get what we need out of the department heads through our liaison. And I think that's all it is, is a communication thing, and I think that, that we can overcome that hurdle this year. Last, Mr. Year's, Jones. last year's problem began relative to the subcommittees only now. Began with the enormous number of subcommittees that were created for seemingly no particular purpose. Correct. All right, and that caused a reaction, and to some extent, a completely understandable reaction from the Board of Selectmen. Why are you creating all these subcommittees? There is no sense to it. And I said so at the Budget Committee last year. Mm -hmm. But generally, you don't support subcommittees unless they have a specific focus. And many of the subcommittees had no focus mm -hmm. other than, you know, Finance or DPW, I mean, it was not sufficient, okay, for for a subcommittee work. It's sufficient for a representative, but not for a subcommittee. The IT committee was the only one of all of the committees that did anything last year, and there was no problem with the board of selectmen on the IT subcommittee as we were operational. Correct. Zero. And so to assume that we're going to have problems, I think, is is uh, not the not the way to begin our consideration. We can we can move forward. I think it makes sense to identify the individual representatives and the fact that we're going to have the IT subcommittee to follow up on the open items from last year. Now, <clears throat> these individuals that are going to be representatives, as well as those who will be on the IT subcommittee, need to know that they're in place to do this so they can start thinking about doing it so that they can get moving it as soon as possible, but not with any sense of rush or hurry. All right, so I think voting on it now makes more sense than, than delaying it. Any other discussion? Mr. Kravitz. Yeah. I mean, the Board of Selectmen have 
operating control over the town department. Correct. We are charged with putting together a budget, so we have to know enough to be able to know if the budget is in line with the department's request. Correct. I mean, I don't see a problem this year. Okay. I mean, we've got enough bridles now that we should be. <laughs> <laughs> we can keep things bridled. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. <laughs> so I have a feeling you're going to invite me over for a barbecue this summer. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any other discussion on the topic of subcommittee? I hope not. Or liaison. I think that some committee issue, except for possibly the IT committee, probably can go bye bye. Yeah. I, I, I tend to agree with that 100%. Have only that one, and even that existing is maybe debatable. Mm -hmm. But I think having the representative approach and as few as possible, I think we've pretty well established that is a good idea. Oh, great. Let's vote for it then. Yeah. Yeah. One comment. Sure. We've got a lot of new members here. They have to learn what each department does. So don't, don't, put, don't make it too formal. I would agree, and, and, and the representative is something, or the IT subcommittee is, is <coughs> just for consideration, something we can vote on at any time. Um, if something pops up and we feel we need a representative dedicated resources to that, we can address that at any time. Um, that was kind of my say, way of saying, you know, we don't have, we're not forced to do this now, but I agree with you. It is good to get in that mindset. If I know I'm on the IT subcommittee, I can know what to look for in the pipeline coming forward. I can kind of formulate my schedule for how things are going. We're all busy. We all have stuff to do. So I'd like to make a motion that we table this and let it go forward until the issue table, comes table. up. Table. Table. Motion on the table to table the vote. Yeah. Until an issue comes up. Is there a second? Is there a purpose for tabling it? Yeah, so we can end the discussion and get done. <laughs> we can vote on it and end the discussion as well. So if we just vote, Wait Mr. Up. Chairman? The, okay, remind me what your the vote is. The I creation. move that we, we that we reconstitute the IT subcommittee. Okay. And that we appoint Mike Clough as the representative <coughs> to DPW, and Mr. Henderson as the representative to the police department. That's it. I second that. Uh, I would like to hear from Mr. Clough and Mr. Henderson whether they want the position. No, what about not. the fire department? We don't have a fireman. <laughs> <laughs> we have a fireman. <laughs> I don't have a problem with it. Um, if we don't have some of the issues we had last year. And, and I, I think... I'm willing to try again. I, I guess that's the answer. Thank you for that. And I, I think this is more of a, if we need expertise, mm -hmm. we come to you and, and, and look to you. And if we... if you know, you bring up some questions to this board that we say, yeah, you know. Uh, you know, if you sit here and say, you know, Nick, we should look at the trucks, you know, check out the rod on the trucks, I, I think um, we, we should, you know, say, hey, yeah, let's move on forward on that because, we, you know, you have that some ex expertise. It's not going to be you have a meeting with the department head once a month. Um, uh, we're not trying to overburden our department heads in that, in that sense. Um, Mr. Henderson. I certainly wouldn't have a problem with it, you know. Okay. And like usual, you know, hey, I'm wide open. So if there's, uh, you know, I got questions or issues with the with the budget or learning some of the new uh, things on the budget process, hey, I've got a wealth of information here. <coughs> sure. I'll be in to talk to you all. Yeah, sure. Is the selectman representative okay with this proposal? I am okay with it, yes, 100%. Okay. Um, I, I don't. Just as far as discussion goes, I don't have any problem with creating the positions right now. Um, I, I think that, you know, having them here is a, is a good thing to get your mind set. And, and, and that seems, yeah, seems to be the, the, the sound of the board. Did you move? Oh, he, did, yeah. he did move. Yeah, I believe it was seconded by Mr. Pierce. Mm -hmm. So all those, in, so just for clarification, the IT subcommittee members would remain the same from last year? Mm -hmm. Well, um... I'm recreating the IT subcommittee, and, and like last year, like anyone who wants a volunteer, volunteer. I insist that you be back on it. I insist that I be back on it, and I insist that Mr. Pierce be back on it. I, I guess just, I'll incorporate that as part of my motion. <laughs> <laughs> but I think last year the IT subcommittee said anyone who was well, anyone who wants to join us, you know, we were welcome. Correct. We welcomed that. And, and I think we want to maintain that. I'm not sure. We haven't voted as a subcommittee on that, but I, I have perceived that to be the case. Mike, are you okay with that? That's yeah, okay for me temporarily. 
I'm okay with that as well. Um, I think we got a lot accomplished last year. Uh, I'd be willing to. Then we have the motion in the second for the vote. Yeah. Um, I would then say all those in favor of appointing the IT subcommittee members as listed and the representatives to the um, police department, DPW, um, if needed. All those in favor, uh, raise your hand for the vote, please. That's going to be Mrs. Bridal, Mrs. Barnes, Mr. Pierce, uh, Brian. Uh, Mr. Pluff, myself, Mr. Ladd, Mr. Jones, Augustine, and Henderson. Those no votes. Mr. Kravitz. Any abstentions? No. Say again? You're going to need more meetings. Why? At this rate. The, the, subcommittees, the subcommittees held meetings that were not a part of this meeting. They no. met on their own terms. No, she's just talking about the flow no. of this one. Yeah, we'll be okay. <laughs> now, we got to get to that vote a little more quickly. A little less redundancy would be helpful. Oh, yeah. yeah. uh, All right. All right. <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, I do have to throw in one thing. We are we are on to other new business, so I will recognize you. Um, I've been a member of the CIP. We do have a subcommittee with the CIP. Okay. I've been on that committee for three years. Um I move that we make uh, that Mr. Often. Plus, uh, Mr. Lapham uh, our representatives of CIP. I second that. Would you accept that? Yes. All if you would good. make Sonny Kravitz yeah, I was alternate. I will make Sonny Kravitz the alternate in my motion that Mr. Pierce is seconding again. Thank you. Yes. All, All those in favor. Well, uh, uh, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. All those in favor? <laughs> All opposed? No oppositions. Any abstentions? That's a unanimous in favor. Get a little quicker on the vote. Um, recreation department. I was the representative last year. I have no problem filling that role again. I have a good relationship with them. Um, I will entertain a motion to have a representative to the recreation department if there's such need. I think Nick is a rep. To so moved, you. <laughs> All those in favor? Wow. All opposed? And I will abstain, but. I happily accept that. What about the cemetery department? <laughs> <laughs> oh, have we had any involvement now? <laughs> is there, uh, in all honesty, is there any other committee or board that I'm missing that we send a representative to? I didn't think there was. All right, we have on to other new business. I have nothing. Miss Wolseley, you said at some point you had something. I would just ask if there's anybody on the board first. I have a question, and I don't know if you got any feedback on this from the board or not. There's been a lot of talk about the sewer pipes coming from the pumping station over to the treatment plant. Yep. And there was some discussion at one point about having a special meeting. And I haven't heard from the selectors meeting as to what the status is of all that. It's not going we, to be a special meeting. Yeah, I heard there wasn't going to be one, but I... Was that I official? Would, from the yes, okay, I must have missed that meeting. Hmm. Yeah, night. but last night we talked about it. By the time that we could actually get the second, the special meeting, it would be like the Saturday before... Sometime in January or something. So mm -mm. there is an emergency place. There is an emergency. I have it. An emergency in place with DPW that if something does happen to the I mean, pipe, emergency plan, you mean? Emergency plan in gotcha. place that if something does happen, DPW will get in there yeah. and deal with it and put a, run a pipe across the marsh. Hopefully, we won't have to go there. I heard the beach will not shut down. Yeah. Just, will not close. Just exactly as those with an accurate crystal ball predicted. This, this state won't allow it. Any, uh, any other comments, new business from the board? If not, Ms. Rosie? Oh, sorry. You want us for September? Do you want the school for yes, September? Yes, you should. Mm. Yes. yes. I've never, I've never understood, right? I've never understood the need school. for that meeting. We because want to hear what's the beginning closes. of the year. Yeah. It's probably it's the beginning of our year. You find out what we did last year and yeah. what we're going to do this year. Mm -hmm. and how right. the, reason I, the reason I don't it's understand it is because you come in in December with your budget. Right. Yeah. Okay. And so you can tell us what's going on then, too. No. Right. To have a, a meeting dedicated for you telling us what you did last year yeah. suggests that we should have the village district in for a special meeting and telling us what they did last year and, and all the various department heads should come in and tell us what they did last year. Um, so that's why I, I don't understand it. I would, okay? I would disagree. I think I'm not, I'm not objecting to it. I just don't understand yeah, I, I, the, the, lack of, the okay. lack of symmetry on the matter. They, they brought in, I'm assuming the Hampton Academy project is going to have some more development this year. Absolutely. And I know that that is going to uh, probably require some 
attention from us um, more. So I, I, I would be inclined to keep your September meeting like we have in years past. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, I just think it's a it's. You brought it up the Hampton Academy project, so you yep. brought up a sore point with me. I got to make a point. Which I'm, I, how about this? I, I got no. I need to make this. Everyone's point. Everyone's got to make a point. Go ahead, Tim. I, I was a bit skewered publicly. Oh. Why? Because I voted for the Hampton Academy project, yet rational taxpayers voted against it. Somehow that became an ethical challenge on my part. Wait, well, wait, God wait. damn it, I want to make it clear. All right? I do not vote on the positions of rational taxpayers. I only support their website. I'm a software dude. That's what I do. I facilitate communication. One of those tools I use is a website, and I do it for people. I do it for organizations. That's what I do. I do not take positions contrary to what I do in public, regardless of what one might have read in that rag called the Hampton Union. Enough said. Thank you, Mr. Jones. I would recommend that the uh, <laughs> Budget Committee keep that September meeting as it usually is informative. Yeah. Mr. Pierce. I'm going to say that just for Mr. Jones' benefit. Say this. We've always done it that way. That's and that? I like it that way. Oh, okay. September. What way is that? Having September. In September. I didn't object to it. I only said I didn't understand it. Well, I That's just, not an objection. I just, I just explained to you. We've always done it that way. It's a different we calendar than we're, a different yeah. calendar. It took 10 minutes and there was no disagreement. Right. <laughs> I simply said I didn't understand it, and I remain not understanding it. I will it. give the floor to Ms. Wolseley, as she uh, said that she had some new business for us to address. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying your the, the initial stages of your stint as the chairman. In 1954, wow. the voters of the town of Hampton voted to bring the town in under the Municipal Budget Act. I have a very, very special spot in my heart for the Budget Committee because the Budget Committee forms the third leg of the stool to protect the taxpayers. You have the voters, you have the Board of Selectmen, and the Municipal Budget Committee. The mission of this committee is clear and very, very important. In my years serving as a member of the committee, an elected member of the committee, and a representative from the Board of Selectmen, I will say that you need a serious focus, first of all, on understanding the law. You all need to be familiar with RSA 32. It is a very important statute. I have also found, both on the 15-member budget committee and now as it's being downsized a little bit, that there are some people who work their tails off and other people who will go to a monthly meeting and say goodbye and see you the next month. The deal should be that everybody on this committee really works hard, really does research, really dedicates themselves to the uniqueness of this committee and its mission. I am very, very passionate about the contribution that the Budget Committee makes to this community. You are a front line of defense for the taxpayers in this community. And the young reporter from the Hampton Union, when he called up and asked for your, your statement or whatever, your running statement, I said, what are the three issues? And I said, money, money, money. And I had the silence on the other end of the phone. But there is nothing more critical than the tax to the taxpayers of this community and the money they spend to support the services that we give. So I'm hoping to see a, a better informed committee because the budget we make, not for this year, this year's done, the budget we make for 2017 is going to take everybody's thought and care and attention starting right now, right now. I don't know how many of you go to the transfer station or the public works yard. Uh, I sat on the board that closed that landfill. And, and I also um, served uh, with the first bridal. Right? Yes, you did serve the with first the first bridal. bridal. <laughs> and was it the first? It, well, actually, it was the Alan second. Alan mm -hmm. was, that was first. the very first? Yes, first but bridal. Rocky but served on the budget. And then, <laughs> they, and then, then they came over on the Mayflower? 
But sixteen twenty seven? No, I don't know. But it's <laughs> it's up to up. it's up yeah. to all of you to try to be more <laughs> aware of what's happening. I have been uh, I go to the transfer station in the public works yard probably once a week on weekends and check things out. I offered last year to do a tour of the yard because with the little contention that was going on between the Board of Selectmen and the Budget Committee, it didn't look like people were going to get a hands-on opportunity. I made the offer to the then chairman in the summer, but summer is a little tricky time. I repeated the offer in the fall. And uh, the selectmen at that time were promising a tour or some little uh, informational thing. But uh, when I sent out an invitation after consulting with the chairman to members of the budget committee, and I sent out an invitation to everyone, I got email responses from Mr. Kravitz, Mr. Lapham, because Mr. Pluff and I are veterans at going over to public works, and uh, the then Representative Wood, who's no longer with the Budget Committee. And I did have some emails from some other members saying, we'll wait for the Selectman's tour. When was the Selectman's tour last year? You need to be proactive, and you need to understand what's going on in this community. And one of you mentioned, uh, and I think it might have been Tim, Public Works. There are few things more critical to this town than the operation of public works. That's a $10 million operation, $5 million roughly for their annual budget, and $5 million for the vehicles and all of the accessories down there. That is critical. And if you don't start focusing now and try to rush through putting together a budget in October and November and December, good luck because you owe it to every taxpayer in this community to focus on how these departments are running, how is the money being spent, and how we can best serve the interests of the taxpayers. There's a lot of scary stuff coming up. And this problem with the sewer lines across the marsh is a big, big scare. This is a big story, and it's going to cost a lot of money. And I'll caution you on one other thing. And by the way, uh, Mr. Chairman, I was very encouraged when you spoke up at the deliberative session on the IT committee because you brought forth information that I wasn't aware of at the time that we had that meeting. And that's critical. So the things that you and Mr. Uh, Henderson and Mr. Pluff and whoever goes in, in fact, when we did the tour with Sonny and Brian, because Mike and I spent two and a half hours at Public Works that morning, and Brian was taking notes for practically the whole trip so when when I see focus like that, it, it gives me some heart. It makes me happier that we're doing our job. This is not a job. If you ran for this committee and you plan to sit here once a month and talk to each other and take a few votes, that's not what the budget committee's for. If you're in this now, I hope you're in it 100%. I hope you're dedicated to doing the very, very best that you can do for this town. Ginny and I go way back on the budget committee to the to the years when snow came in the windows in the in the library up there. This is a serious thing. This is a serious committee. The law gives this committee a tremendous amount of power and flexibility. If you live in a town like Northampton, and I'm not picking on Northampton, that only has an advisory budget committee, good luck. This is a very, very important service that you give here. And I'm hoping everybody is picking up the material, reading the material, asking questions, going online. Go down to Public Works. Some of you will remember, Mike will remember, when I came back on the Board of Selectmen in 2013, and I went in the back where the branches are disposed of or Louise, something. May I ask a question? Yes. And I, and I saw those, wait one second though, and I saw those big piles, big, how many of you saw those great huge piles that the state dumped with all the recyclables and stuff, all from the beach rakings? And I hollered, and I jumped up and down, and I fussed, and I think it took four of those huge big trailers to get that stuff off there. You need to be aware of what's going on in this community. So go and visit Public Works. Just go and dump some of your trash on a weekend. But understand what's happening around you. And I'm making that serious plea, because this committee means something 
and we want to make it Thank you, do its job. Thank you very much. I know. And you tell me to shut up, but there's some things that, Thank you that very, we need to say every much. year. No, I appreciate your, your, your charge, and I do uh, encourage that as well. I'm going to allow Mr. Jones to oh, ask you're, his you're question. Finished, right? <gasps> For the time being. Okay. I'm just warming up. Uh, I just wanted to point out that uh, as long as I, I'm not asking a question because you're done, so I'm just going to make a statement. We made uh, representatives of the DPW, Mike Pluff. I rely on him to tell us the needs of the DPW and how, where we need to focus our attention. Yeah. I rely on him to give us leadership in that area. Just as I rely on Mr. Henderson to give us leadership mm -hmm. on areas of the police department that we may, we may need to focus our attention on. Mm -hmm. and, and, and other people are just, you know, kind of like making suggestions. But these guys I'm listening to on, on those two topics. So I don't want to hear others give me speeches about what we need to do in DPW. That's what we got our leader over here for. All right? That's it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome, sir. And I think I think the intent. One second, Mr. Pierce. I think uh, the intent was, was very good. I think um, this is not a passive committee. Um, this is a committee that has a, a good responsibility to the taxpayers. We're all elected for a reason um, to provide them with as much information as possible. And I think that was the point you were trying to drive home. You bet. And um, I think that's a very uh, noble point and a very admirable point for us to get to. And I actually do think we all take this seriously. I think I've talked to everybody in this room on a personal level. And I think that we're all here for a reason or else we wouldn't have run. Um, and uh, that being said, I will recognize Mr. Pierce. I'd like to make a motion to reassert. Second. All those in favor? <laughs> Unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Pierce. 835. We'll see you all on the 17th of May. That's it. That's it. <laughs>